hello friends welcome back to another video on this channel in today's video i will show you guys how i made my new creation a autonomous firefighting robot using an arduino a flame sensor two flame sensors mounted on servos and using an ultrasonic distance sensor so let me show you guys how this works basically as you guys saw in the clip before these sen these uh, flame sensors they can uh, detect the infrared uh, rays emitted by a fire so basically the way it works is it's moving on this servo the servo moves and it knows exactly what position the flame sensor is orienting now based on that whenever it detects a fire what happens is it knows which side of which flame sensor detected the fire and at what degrees it knows from the servo so what it does is it takes that data like it calculates how much deviation it has to do in which degree it then uses the compass up here the digital compass this is a Q, uh, qmc 583l compass it uses that compass to calculate exactly how much it has to turn as you guys saw there it turned exactly how much it needed to based on where it was put and it does that using these two wheels here the wheels are connected to these two motors these are 12 volt dc motors uh, the the wheels move and whether it wants to move left or right is controlled with either which one is turned on and then it will move forward uh, until uh, all this ultrasonic distance sensor here this is the hc sr04 this guy detects that there is something close to it at which point the arduino will send a signal to this relay over here which will then enable this air pump this is a 12 volt dc air pump so Basically, let me just uh, give you a brief description about the wiring. So, if you look closely here, the brains of the operation is the Arduino Uno in here. Basically, how I have it wired up is quite simple. Actually, it's completely mentioned in the code as well. So, that you can just look at the code and find out like it's all labeled in the code. Because many people were complaining about not having a circuit diagram. So, from now on, I will be just labeling it in the code as well. But let me just tell you guys anyways so this both the flame sensors this one and that one both are running via a 5 volt rail so the 5 volt rail come is this one here till here this rail is 5 volt on both sides like 5 volt positive and 5 volt negative so we have the both the sensors connected to the same 5 volt i have this ultrasonic distance sensor as well also connected to the 5 volt as well as both the servos the servos are actually sg90 servos uh, and the flame sensor these flame sensors in particular they work by like they re, uh, the threshold value it reduces the value if a flame is detected in some sensors it's the opposite way like it will increase the value if a flame is detected so if you have one of those sensors then just where it says less than just make it greater than it then rest everything is fine it will just work i'll show you guys that uh, when i discuss the code as well anyways moving on with wiring or the pins for pin out pins like where the data pins connect and all is there in the code everything is mentioned let me just show you guys a bit more about the power i was talking about so i told you guys that the 5 volt components are powered via the 5 volt rail now this 5 volt rail is actually powered from here so i have over here i have a, a lithium polymer battery as you can see this is a 12 volt lipo this guy power comes from here and goes to these two wires this just go into this xt60 connector they just like shove in basically it goes into this this is the l2918 motor controller this is what uh, controls both the motors individually as you can see there are the data pins coming in from there to the arduino over here uh, other than that uh, it other than that uh, the 12 volt rail also comes in via these two wires into this right here this is a 5 volt uh, sorry a variable 5 amp uh, constant current uh, like constant voltage uh, step down thing step down buck converter basically it takes in the 12 volts here it converts it to a 5 volt 5 amp signal here and it goes over here and plugs in right there into the breadboard after that uh, all the all the 5 volt components are powered from it directly including sorry excluding the arduino uno itself because i found that con directly running the uno off of the uh, breadboard uh, sorry the uh, the uh, 12 volt controller it sorry the 5 volt regulator thing it just is a bit finicky sometimes it doesn't work properly so what i have done is i have this power bank here this is just uh, a 5 volt power bank like it just gives out a usb signal which powers comes in here using this cable as you can see 
and that powers just the Arduino, nothing else. Like uh, only the Arduino is powered, only the brains of the system works. So basically, uh, if you do this approach, there are a few things you need to be aware of. First thing is that first of all, you want to be connecting the uh, wire which connects up uh, the sensors uh, as well as uh, like the servos because otherwise what happens is if you power on the arduino first it will detect that there is zero sig uh, signal coming in of, uh, from the analog pins and then it will basically just start go going wherever it is uh, pointed at first which is obviously not what we want so instead you want to power on the uh, that part first and then you are going to be powering on the uh, arduino itself another thing to be aware of is because we are using analog signal for both uh, both our uh, flame detectors as well as the servos you want the ground pin at ground to be the common ground so basically i have a ground wire coming from the arduino only a ground wire not a power wire i have a ground wire coming from the arduino ground to the ground board uh, ground rail of the breadboard this just get syncs up with the ground from both the flame sensors as well as the servos and it just makes everything work a little bit better uh, for powering the uh, the powering the pump here basically it just goes into this relay I showed you before this relay also just uh, the relay also takes power from the same 12 volt it is getting from that battery there and basically the Arduino then whenever it uh, thinks that it's close like it is at the current heading and it is an object is there it will basically give a 5 volt signal which will click the relay which you guys heard in the video there and it will turn on the system uh, if you are wondering what this post is here, this is nothing, this chassis actually I reused from my autonomous vehicle video. Uh, so that's why that post is there, that was where the GPS stood. So that's basically it. Now, uh, if you guys are wondering about the physical making of the chassis, basically it's quite simple. All I have is over here, if I zoom out, as you can see, these two are connected using this L-shaped brackets. These you can just buy for very, very cheap. And for the... Uh, the compass over here yeah sorry i forgot about the compass so the compass uh, needs 3.3 volt not 5 volt so that the compass is the only uh, external module that is powered off of the arduino's 3.3 volt rail here as you can see this connects up and goes over up to here uh, the the compass is scl sda goes into the arduino scl sda uh, if you're using a different breadboard just look up your pin out and you'll find out where the scl and sda pins are and just connect them up to your compass uh, you also want to calibrate the compass but we'll get on to that uh, in just a second other than that basically the sensors themselves are mounted on these little l-shaped brackets so th this is just a l-shaped bracket i have two of them mounted as you can see i have them just zip tied the two brackets together and the servos are also zip tied onto the upper bracket over here i have just used some super glue and uh, stuck it onto this uh, thing here this hardboard type thing uh, for in the front i have this in the front i just have this swivel wheel here as you can see it swivels and moves so it doesn't in, uh, just gives it full control of everything and i have this guy zip tied onto the board and the motors themselves i would recommend you to support the motors so i have them mounted here but the backs are supported via this zip tie as you can see it's just tied up with the uh, this uh, board itself to just give it some extra support uh, so yeah that's basically it for making and this oh, another thing you want the compass uh, to be elevated from the rest of the system by about 60 centimeters more or less uh, what that does is basically the compass is obviously relies on the magnetic field to work so that will just let the magnetic like the magnetic field sorry the magnetic field which is created by the arduinos as well as the power supplies etc all these things here they will not interfere with the compass if you have it quite high up so that's basically it for physically wiring up and making the thing let me just quickly switch over to the computer and show you guys the code now all right so as you can see here i have the code opened up now this is the arduino code that is running on it so let me just quickly explain it to you and uh, tell you about some of the things you might want to change so first things first we have the three libraries uh, the servo library which is a default library as well as the wire.h library this is for the communication with the compass uh, this is also default library this library is a uh, library you'll have to install just look up qm 3 l compass uh, this is the first one that comes up so once you have all those installed we are just creating some servo pins here now these are the things i was talking about everything is labeled here so like uh, the left plane pilum is connected to a5 the right one is connected to a0 this is the analog outputs by the way 
and then all the digital pins are shown so right uh, so left servers 12 right servers 11 and this is a threshold uh, so basically like mine it goes down as i said so this is the threshold you want to set below this it will uh, like it will detect that a flame is there uh, if it is higher so you might want to set it like if it increases for example if a fresh hole is there so you might want to set it a bit higher and then uh, right down here i'll just go, get to that uh, you want to set it to greater than and then basically then it will know that there's a fire and so it will just tell uh, where it is uh, this is another thing that you might want to change this is the servo angle basically now in my case the servos are obviously not exactly mounted correctly like zero degrees is not zero degrees and also the servo like doesn't sweep exactly completely uh, like it doesn't exactly go uh, like if it says 180 degrees it's not exactly 180 it's sometimes a bit more it's sometimes a bit less so we are accounting for that here what this is is after setting your like uh, default so where you have say you mounted it such that uh, 10 degrees is coming up as your straight ahead so we'll set that there and after that what we will do is basically uh, from like measuring it from the first point to the last point like say for example it goes up until 180 degrees your servo so you want to make it move to 180 degrees and then we'll use a protractor to measure exactly what angle it actually is at and this is that angle so in my case it's supposed to be at 160 sorry 150 but it's at 140 so we are setting that here these are motor pins right here left motor one two right motor one two and then this is your enable pin this is your pwm output uh, for setting the speed which the uh, thing will run at uh, down here we have the relay pin this is the pin which will be enabled when your air pump needs to be started or whatever pump you are using co2 foam whatever right down here we are start this is just standard starting serials attaching things this is something you might want to do this is the calibration i was talking about earlier so you just want to go over here into examples into QMC uh, exam uh, compass here and right down here you will have the calibration code you just want to run this and you want to just move this uh, robot around while keeping it as far away from things like monitors and stuff as possible to get minimum interference like you would in uh, uh, when you are running it and then you just want to in, after checking you want to check your compass so you will put that in your azimuth code you will just put that right under compass dot in it in the setup page and you'll just want to use like a compass of anything like you can use a phone compass or whatever and ensure that the compass is doing exactly what you want it to like it's showing the correct angle and then basically over here this is something else you might want to change this is the speed so i have my running at full speed here so it goes from 0 to 255 uh, that's the pwm output 255 is max 0 is uh, obviously 0 so just change that according to what you want it to do now uh, uh, aside from that uh, really one anything else you might want to change is this here so this is the ang range your servers want to do so as i said uh, your offsets so in my case it is 30 from 180 and 180 to 30 so i have my servers offset by 30 degrees basically uh, so that's why i have to change that offset here now uh, one like for one server 180 is forward and 30 uh, is uh, forward for the other server basically and the reason this other so one servo i have uh, zero like no uh, offset just change like basically what i want you to do is just run a servo.h code and see what angles your forward backward etc comes up at and just put those here uh, as your range for e, the respective servos so this is the left and this is the right servo just put that in here uh, same with this backward time just put this here as well is this for this one is for the forward sweep this one is for the backward sweep for knowing the position other than that this is basically just calculating it so the way it works is it takes the position it is at so we are starting from zero we are going till the servo angle range and we are adding one degree each time and then we are basically mapping that to the servos uh, what the servos think it is supposed to be doing so we are mapping it to that angle and writing it to the servos we are taking that uh, uh, position data and which side it is coming from and we're basically just calculating it if we see that a flame is there from this void uh, program here with this check flame and if it is then we are going to put adjust heading we are going to give it the angle as well as the side for calculation later so that's the same thing for the reverse angle now in the check flame basically this is what i was telling you about if flame value is less than threshold just set this as greater than threshold if we set it at greater than threshold then basically if it's higher than that set a value it will say that the flame is on if it's less then in my like in my case then it detects the flame is on 
this is for debugging it will print the side the flame is detected on as well as the angle uh, this is for obviously for debugging if your system is not working and then once it knows which angle it is at and at the side then it will take that heading it will send it to this adjust heading void as, as it did in the void loop part and it will then read from the compass the current heading which it is getting here we know its desired heading which it is getting from this part here which it's supposed to go and then if we are saying that if it is to the left then we'll subtract the angle if it's to the right like the film is detected by the right side we'll add the angle to move to the exact position uh, because in a 360 degree compass like the left side you are basically reducing the angle and on the right you are adding the angle now obviously in some cases this can grow up great like in the negative as well as above 360 degrees so we are offsetting that here and changing to ensure that the value is between 0 and 360 so that the compass doesn't just like the system knows what to do and then we are calculating the delta which is uh, basically the desired heading which we want to be and the current heading now if the delta is coming negative then we know that we are to the left of it and if it's coming positive we are, then we know to the right of it so based on that here we are just basically saying if it is negative then we are going to move to the left if it's positive then we are going to move to the right and then if it is in the acceptable range obviously these are not precision instruments so there is a uh, range which we have to set as acceptable in my case it's 5 degrees positive or negative so it's a 10 degree radius where it will not uh, like attempt to move it if it is within that range then it will basically stop the motors and then it will set uh, this extinguish fire loop so it will set uh, this part here this is the part where it basically takes the distance so here this is the uh, code block which is the extinguish flyer as you can see when it's set true which is set true from here after it has turned to the respective angle we will basically move for uh, get a distance from the ultrasonic distance sensor which is the distance of the nearest object which i told you guys before if that distance is greater than 15 then we'll keep moving forward until we, basically this until we approach the flame right away right like it's right in front of us and then as you guys saw after it's done moving forward it will stop the motors it will set the digital pin to high we are giving a reasonable amount of time which we think it will uh, move like in which we should be done with the flame like to ensure that the compass doesn't just uh, run forever sorry the uh, the air pump doesn't run forever after that we are setting it to low we are breaking the code so after the basically once this breaks what will happen is all of these will uh, so as you can see the break statements are in such a way that once this breaks this move robot thing will break and that will break till here and the check flame will then after that the check flame will break from here and it will continue looping again after it has done so basically to reset the system and to get it detecting the flame once again uh, and just this ex get distance part this is just the trigger like the code block for getting a distance from the ultrasonic distance sensor basically we are sending a pulse we are waiting for two microseconds and then we are receiving the pulse well, after that we are basically just calculating it by dividing it by the speed of sound and we are doing it in uh, in centimeters so we get the distance in centimeters this is 15 centimeters by the way and then after that this is just your simple uh, turn logic so turning left right forward or stop motors uh, in my case i'm only using one motor to turn left or right as you guys saw there you can set the other set to high so for example if you want to move left your left motor should be reversing and your right should be going forward which it is doing here my left motor stays stopped and the right motor reverses as you see uh, same with here and in forward all, both the motors should move forward and in stop you are basically setting all the motors to stop so yeah that's basically it for the code i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel and i hope to see you guys next time